Hello students, I am Pankaj Singh. Welcome to this channel where every question has an answer. And uh, today that uh, we are going to take another uh, topic and it is talking about uh, localization of iron and steel industry in India. Okay, it is also one of the important, uh, very important uh, topic for the Indian geography. So here we'll have to see that uh, localization of iron and steel industry in India and what are the some factors responsible for that we'll have to see and in this factor that we'll see like i said that first one we'll see the availability of raw material first factor that we'll have to see and i'll get into the detail of this slowly and slowly availability of raw material and in this raw material what are the things which is required and this is i said that we can say like um, we can say like i said iron ore limestone coking coal manganese and coal for energy understood again let me explain which are the uh, raw material you need i said that iron ore yes limestone coking coal and uh, manganese and coal as an energy and i'll explain each and every factors so that uh, you can understand it very well another point that we'll have to see that after the second factor that we need to know it's about i said the transportation network in the transportation network there is a you know that there is a railways roadways waterways and in the waterways there is a national waterway and the ports are there understood it thereafter that uh, we'll have to see the some factors here it is we need a uh, cheap and skilled labor we need uh, cheap and uh, skilled cheap and skilled labor another one that we'll see market and it is i said that domestic market as well as an international market and one we have to see in the iron steel industry it is also important that there is a water needed for cooling the hot iron after formation of iron there is a need for water that is water for cooling understood it so water is an important factor therefore the iron steel industry generally locate near uh, i said the rivers some tanks some dams where they they can easily get the water so let us go back and then uh, first uh, we'll see like i said that first it is availability of raw material and then first one we'll have to see iron ore availability of raw material as an iron ore i said iron ore can be i said uh, magnetite magnetite hematite limonite Siderite. But the important one I said that iron ore, it is for what I said that magnetite and hematite. Yes. And India has, uh, I said, that good amount of iron ore reserve in the different states. And uh, we can say that uh, iron ore is mostly depending upon the two factors which is giving good amount of formation of, I said, that iron state, it is magnetite and hematite. After that, it is a limestone, all of you are aware of and then coking coal magnesium and coal for coal as an energy so we have seen that which are the which are the iron ore needed yes perhaps it is clear hematite magnetite limonite and which one i said that siderite these are another one i said another one i said that there is a need of limestone limestone and that is i can say that calcium carbonate let us see why we need this for iron and in steel industry why we need this uh, uh, calcium carbonate you know that in the calcium carbonate what we'll do what we'll do calcium carbonate this limestone will be heated will be heated in the absence of air in the absence of air and this process is known as i said calcination this process is known as calcination is it okay this process is known as what calcination so calcium carbonate or limestone is heated in the absence of air because already oxygen is there so we should not heat it in the presence of air so what happened it will convert into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide so that becomes our 
lime. It became our, so it has been converted into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide and calcium oxide is a lime. Now, you know that iron ore, iron ore has, I said that silica as impurity. Silica as impurity. So, what happened? This calcium oxide, which we have got, that lime we have got, will, I said that react with silica. So, that iron ore has been mixed with calcium oxide and then what happened? This calcium oxide reacted with silica that is a sand which is available as an impurity in the iron ore, hematite, magnetite and all. So, what happened? It will form calcium silicate and that is known as slag. And now this way from the iron ore we have been able to remove the impurities. And when we are able to remove the impurities that slag it is, I said, that discarded from the iron steel plant. But at present, we started using in the different industry with making road, making this slag, and we are started also using in the cement industry to some extent. So now, so why we need limestone? What is the need of limestone that you understood? I said to remove impurities, to remove impurities, to remove impurities and how it is clear yes or not another the two things are clear to you another one factor that we have to see is like i said that what is the use of coking coal coking coal you know that coking coal and manganese both are the same purpose by adding coking coal, it is in a good quality coal very, by adding coking coal, we, I said that uh, increase the strength of, increase the strength of steel. And also, we magnesium is also being added for increasing the Increasing the strength of steel. So, I think these two factors again it is clear. What is the mean? You know that for iron and steel industry at a larger scale integrated level, there is a need of I said that iron ore and the different types of iron ore discuss. Another one that we have said, I said there is a need of I said the limestone. Limestone is what I said that it is through the calcination process we heat it and after heating it is converting into calcium oxide that is lime and carbon dioxide. And that lime reacted with the silica that is sand present into the iron ore and then silica is removed in the form of slag. Understood it? So impurities. So limestone use is to remove impurities. What is the use of coking coal in iron steel industry? Increase the strength of the steel and similarly manganese is also increasing the strength of the steel. Understood it? Another one I said that, another one coal as energy. You know that use of coal, whenever it is cooking coal, but it is for the giving the strength to the steel, high quality coal and then coal as energy means low quality coal are utilized to produce electricity. And what I said that heat in the blast furnace, yes or not? So giving energy, electricity and heat in the blast furnace. So these are the factors we can be say that it is important factor. And uh, another one that we can also see here, it is water for cooling, water for cooling. So, generally steel industries are located near, I said that if Tata and any steel industry, if you see it is located near Subarnarekha and Kharkai river and uh, Bokaro steel plant, it is located nearby uh, Damodar river, Ajay river, these are the rivers. So, and there is you know, some tanks and uh, dams are also made through which the water can come for the cooling, uh, for cooling what I said, cooling the hot iron ore. And uh, through the cooling process also we used to increase the strength. Another, every iron and steel industry somewhere located nearby any rivers. And what is the job of that river and water? It is for the cooling purpose, yes or not? So, I think it is clear to all of you. And another portion point that we are going to see the first raw material availability of raw material is clear to you. Now transportation network, if I say the transportation network, 
railways, if I am talking about railways, roadways, the railways through which what will happen? The two things will happen. We'll bring raw material. What will happen? We'll bring raw material. And after the formation of steel, we can also yes send it to the market. We can send it to the what? Market. So, the railways can be the same way, in similar way, roadways can be utilized, similar way, waterways can be utilized. Yes or not? But if I say that, what happened in our, in the world or in India, the most cheapest is waterway. Most cheapest is waterway. Most cheapest, if I say, is waterway. And thereafter, there is a railways. And thereafter, we can say roadways. Is it clear? So, these are the three important waterways. We cannot use airways. So, railways, roadways, waterways. So, these are the things. But waterways are available at any nearby industry. Then the, it can be, uh, it, is, it is utilized for bringing raw material. And uh, I said that transporting, uh, which we can, we can say that uh, uh, finished products, that is the steel. But you know that if I am comparing waterways, suppose if it is taking 1 rupee for transportation of 1 kg of steel, suppose 1 rupee, then the railway will take around 10 to 15 rupees and roadways will take around, I said that around 20 to 25 rupees. Now tell me which transportation is the cheapest and through which you will transport so that the production cost of the steel can reduce. You know that we have to reduce, we have to go through the waterways. Otherwise, railways and roadways. In the present time, you can see that the Indian government is talking about the Sagar Mala project along the ports, different waterways, National Waterway 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and some other waterways are also there. The Indian government is trying to improve this so that the production cost that is involved in the any object can be reduced because in the production cost transportation cost is also involved understood and in the world if you see around uh, i said that uh, in the world eight in the production cost transportation cost is 8% of the total production of or, or the gdp of that country but uh, in india it is around 14% you can say that it is very high so, we are, our product will be sold in the domestic market or international market at higher cost. So, our products will be highly getting, uh, they are getting challenged in this area. So, therefore, logistic is going to be increased in India. The made, making, we are making better logistic and then we are improving uh, railways also, dedicated freight corridor. We are directly dedicated freight corridor. We are making from the ports to the any area that the railway will be there only to uh, bring and send, bring the raw material and send it to the port, finished products and all. There is no other use and that will move fast. There is a Bharat Mala project is also going on and the waterways also, it is going to increase at a very higher level. So, so that the our uh, uh, transportation cost can be reduced. So, I think it is clear. So, anywhere iron and steel industry or any other industries are being located, it is localized then it will be depend upon, so their side, there should be, I said, uh, better this transportation network should be there. Understood it? Another point that we are going to see after the transportation network, I think it is clear. At present, another factor that we can see, the cheap and skilled labor. And yes, it is very much important, cheap and skilled labor in India. You know that uh, we are uh, through the ITI, through the, I say the Pr Pradhan Mantri uh, Vik uh, Vikas Yojana, different kind of, I said that at the national level, we are uh, making the uh, is different kind of improving the skill to the persons, yes or not? So, I said we can be able to see like cheap and skilled labor and generally in India, the population is high 
and uh, the job for uh, demand for the job is very high therefore it becomes cheap labor and they are also skilled and it is available in most parts of the india but mostly it is from the up bihar odisha chhattisgarh madhya pradesh these are the areas there is a uh, 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 people are migrating and then a labor for different industries and different sectors another i said that market yes we need a good market where if i am making some product it should be it should not be with the industry level at factory level it should be sold in the different markets so here we can have a domestic mar market of india itself and international market another one we need water for cooling that we have discussed now i think these things are clear the cheap, cheap skill labor market these factors are i said that these factors for available for every industry but the major changes in the what i said that raw material but uh, i said that transportation it is also available for at every in industry transportation uh, is also i said playing an important role so which are the factors playing important role for the localization of iron and steel industry first one we have seen yes availability of raw material and the availability of raw material iron and steel in iron ore required is mostly hematite and magnetite another calcium carbonate limestone and the limestone is giving i said that helping in the removing the impurities and then there is a coking coal and magnets both are giving strength to steel another water for cooling it is required yes or not and coal as an energy so the two important things most of of i said that iron ore and coal yes so can we see like i said that these are the two we'll see that why uh, there is a localization of if the question comes discuss any uh, uh, iron steel industry and their localization so first we are going to see the localization of bokaro steel plant and then let us see here if i am talking about bokaro steel plant it is in one of the district or it is a important city in uh, jharkhand area and then bokaro steel plant it is located here and it is getting iron ore from the uh, west singhum region in the west singhum in the below jharkhand southern side if you see there is an uh, east singhum and west singhum in the west singhum there is an i said that nua mundi and kiribau these are the two areas from where that bokaro uh, steel industry which is i said that in, uh, i said that uh, uh, taking iron as a raw material so it should be nearby because it is a heavy one so uh, it should be nearby because it is heavy one if we bring it from the transporting it to far distances that uh, transportation cost increases and that lead to the increase in the production cost so therefore we will try to take it from the nearby so just nearby region in the west singhu there is a near uh, nua mundi and kiribau another we can be able to see that the coal you know that uh, bo nearby bokaro there is a one district is there dhanbad and in the dhanbad the famous uh, coal field is there jharia coal field and from the jharia coal field uh, that bokaro steel industry is taking coal understood coal as an energy and then there is a need of coking coal also so i think it is clear to you is it clear another one we need uh, i said uh, what are which ones from the in the odisha sundargarh there is an odisha there is a sundargarh in the uh, sundargarh district and there is an also raurkela steel plant from there we are taking manganese manganese we need not more manganese but uh, some amount of good manganese we need so we are transporting it little, little far uh, that is in the odisha and transporting it to the bokaro steel industry is this clear so we have manganese we have seen another one that we can be able to see the limestone this is for the limestone this is for the what just in the bokaro in the sorry nearby bokaro uh, there is an i said palamu district is there there is a good amount of uh, limestone is available and importing limestone from uh, sorry trans, uh, taking limestone from palamu district is it clear everyone so again which are the raw materials we have been able to see iron ore with the good quality hematite magnetite is from the kiribau and nua mundi we have been able to see uh, in the west singhum of uh, jharkhand to to bokaro steel plant and another one we have seen i said that uh, we need uh, which one coking coal and then coal so as an energy the coking coal as an is giving strength and we are getting it from the jharia nearby dhanbad jharia coal field another one we have seen magnes to increasing strength and we are getting it from the sundargarh nearby raurkela in the odisha and another it is limestone from the palamu 
that is i think clear and uh, another one that uh, we can see here it is which river is passing through that through which they are taking water and here it is damodar river is passing nearby bokaro and then water of level from this river understood it so we have been able to see these raw materials and a, a part of it i know you know that it is connected near to the it is connected near to the it is here it is we have an uh, kolkata port and haldia port it is well nearby connected and the several waterways and uh, waterways it is uh, uh, connected with the waterways national waterway one here it is yes uh, ganga river is itself from uh, prayagraj to haldia it is national waterway one so we are getting toward this uh, uh, howrah or kolkata and from there it is national waterway one through the railways and roadways and another one uh, we can be able to see we can send it to the uh, uh, which one international market and we can also uh, give it to the different parts of india the market is also there and then it is uh, you know that uh, cheap and skill levels are available from the bihar jharkhand itself chatisgarh odisha west bengal up and these are the reason from where the cheap and skill level we can be able to get so already all these factors are i said that helping the localization of a uh, uh, bokaro steel plant as an steel industry at a larger level large integrated steel plant i think you are able to understand how and uh, the localization of industries are especially for iron industry industries taking place so if any doubt please ask the questions and uh, i'll try my best to help you in the, those doubts okay so we have been able to understand the localization of industry and uh, uh, especially bokaro steel plant why it is located in that region and uh, remember that it is uh, uh, it is established uh, in uh, i said that uh, 1972 with the help of russia it has been established understood it so thank you